so y'all play so y'all played spring game last night, right? Yes. Was it it was center point? It was. Did y'all host them? We did. Um Coach Bates, we were actually supposed to host them last year. Um, but Pastor Reeder died on the day of our spring game. And so um tragic event, but we also felt that we shouldn't play. Uh, and so we didn't. Uh we did a we got together with them last summer, did an OTA. I think the world of Coach Bates thinks he's a really good coach. Uh, coach Walters is over there, Jeff Walters. He's a former offensive coordinator at Briarwood for Coach Yancey. He's offensive coordinator when Barrett Trotter was here, took us to the 07 state championship game. He's got four kids. All of them graduated from Briarwood. His oldest, uh, Bo, went and played at Mississippi State. His younger boy, Zeke, went to Southern Miss, then um, went to Samford, ended at Samford. And so great relationship with those guys. And um, it, it was fun. We played at 6 o'clock, and, and I'm so glad we did because I would have gotten home an hour later if we didn't, and I would be struggling this morning. So. <laughs> how did it How did it go? Like, I, I know those games, you try to get a lot of guys, and you might do a half varsity or three-quarters varsity. How, how did the game kind of unfold? It went great. Um, so – for us at Briarwood, we've got to answer certain questions. There's just u- some unique things we do. And when you have a great senior class like we had that worked really hard, uh, left a ton of holes. So who, who's your running back? Who's your second running back? Who uh, – we run this some of this stuff like wing backs. Um, and I need to know who the blockers are going to be. Punt team, like, you know, this is the only live rep we got at punt team until it counts. It was last night. And so I asked them to rush the punter uh, just because I wanted to make sure our blocking was good. So there's a lot of little things uh, like that. You go into this into spring wondering. And then for me and at Briarwood, you got to figure out who your offense and defensive linemen are. Like that's the other big part of this. And so we had a really good spring, uh, really physical spring, proud of the guys, how they work. But uh, we go out there last night and it's like, hey, We'll, we'll let a lot of guys play because they've had a hard off season where they've worked really hard and we need to allow them a chance to show what they've done and how they've improved. So it's always fun. I think there's that senior jump, um, especially at Briarwood. You're going to have some guys that have worked incredibly hard for three years and haven't seen the field. And then all of a sudden, bam, that senior year comes. It all kind of comes together. They've matured. They have the knowledge in their head. Uh, they're hungry. And you just see that jump. And so it was fun last night to get a chance to have – see a lot of guys take that senior jump. And then I put young guys in in the third quarter. Um, and then we played some real young guys in the fourth quarter. And so, you know, my chief concern last night is once I got uh, two reps of punt, once I got to run our heavy package twice, it's like I think all my major questions are answered. Let's make sure everybody's played. And yeah. so that was the big goal for us last night, or for me last night as head coach. I saw the three or four things I really wanted to see, and then now it's like, hey, everybody's worked hard. Everybody's had a great spring. Let's get everybody in. Yeah. So when you say you saw the three or four things you wanted to see, does that mean those things went well, or you just saw them kind of uh, you know, just doing those things and then you critique it later? Yes, the, the latter of the two. It's uh, – it, I saw them happen. I was pleased when it happened, but you can never trust what you see on the field um, because the tape doesn't lie. And so there's some things like when I went back and watched it last night and I just kind of glanced over it last night. I was like, oof, I wish that guy would have done better there. I was hoping for more there. Um, but then there were also some pleasant surprises like, man, that's really good. But a lot of this is pad level and learning how to play. Uh, we, we've had the pleasure of six out of the last 10 years we've been in 6A. Last four years we've been in 6A. So we, we've played some really high ball. And looking forward to us going down to 5A, but also keeping that edge of what a 6A team's like. So, yeah, we might have done fine last night, but that's not the level we're expected to play at around here. So there will be a lot of little things that we get to work on and kind of clean up. Yeah. So you're – your first year as head coach, was that the last year in 5A for y'all? That was. That was uh, okay. 2019. And 19. so we were in 5A. I think we'd spent 
Yeah, we spent four years in 5A at that point, or three years before I became head coach, one more year in 5A, and then headed on up to 6. Wow. You excited to get back to 5A? Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some like, man, it's it'll be fun to be a 5A with schools that are roughly our same size. I mean, we still technically on the small end of 5A when you take out the multiplier. And so, you know, we're 135 a grade. And we've been playing 300 to 330 a grade in 6A. Um, and so it's quite a jump. And um, each one of our kids counts as 1.35. And doesn't matter if you're uh, in the band, uh, just a normal student, an art student, uh, a football player, all of us count as 1.35. And so it pushes us up. But again, that 6A ball, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, it's the highest level. I, I feel like in a lot of ways, it's the most competitive level. Uh, just from top to bottom uh, each year. There's several teams that could win it um, year in and year out. There's some dark courses that have a shot. So that, that that playoffs are a whole lot of fun at that level. Let's talk about this 5A Region 5 that you now find yourself in. So I'm looking, obviously you guys, I'm just going to go alphabetical order, Briarwood, Carver, Birmingham, Corner, Hayden, John Carroll, Ramsey and Winona. What do you kind of make of that region? What do you know about some of those programs? So we've been um, the only ones we've been in a region with before are Carver and um, no, not Carver, Winona and yeah. Ramsey. And immediately when I think of those two th two teams, I think of some amazing games. Uh, Winona, we played 2016. We beat them at their place. We play them in the semifinals, and they come out to our place, and they beat us and go to the state championship game. Um, and and then the next year, we, we get to play them again. They had a really good quarterback, and it, it was it was a good good physical game that year in 2017. And then the next game that stands out to me for them is 2019, because I will always consider 2019 the bus ride from Winona back to Briarwood is one of the all-time great bus rides. Um, it was it was a game that we won. Our guys felt good about it because it was first road win as a head coach. We had started out the season 2-0. and We beat Woodlawn okay. in week three. And then we know now we beat in week four. And the guys were just ecstatic. And that was one of those things. Wow. That game, that bus ride, the unity, the camaraderie that happened on that bus ride with those older guys – I felt like it was a really uni unifying thing, and we ended up having just an amazing bus ride and amazing season after that. And I always kind of look back to that as man, th those are the ones. Like when you get moments yeah. like that, that, that's one of the reasons you do it uh, for the fellowship and just all the fun stuff that the boys were laughing and giving speeches, and it was just funny and fun to be a part of. Yeah, is that like? I covered John Carroll a good bit last year with you know the way their season went just because they've been a program that had been down for so long and you know they had a really a really great year so I wanted I wanted to go see them as much as possible are there are there similarities with Briarwood and and John Carroll beyond just the private school aspect like do you see any similarities there to be honest, uh, when, when the last time I really remember playing John Carroll and really mm. following close attention was when Coach Musso was there and we played them yeah. a lot. I mean, one of the the first Briarwood game I ever went to, I think, was 1993 Briarwood versus Mountain Brook opening game of the season. And then the other game that I remember going to was John Carroll at John Carroll in the pouring rain and my dad had to go to a store and buy us rain jackets and rain suits to prepare for because it was coming down that hard. And I remember walking off that field because they, you know, they had a big slope on their field and the sideline yeah. was covered. And like, I just ruined my shoes. Like that's, you know, I've never been this wet in my life and my shoes are ruined. Um, that that's, but, and then I also remember watching TJ slaughter. I think he was a great yeah. linebacker for John Carroll went to Southern miss, maybe, maybe played, in the league. Like I remember watching him and being like, man, that's some good ball that they're playing over there. Yeah. And those are, those are really my memories, but we've been so kind of consumed in our area that I haven't really even 
followed them. So we we played corner. Um, we played them last time we were in 5A. No, we played them when we were in 6A the first two years in 6A. Okay. Um, in 2020, 2021, they were week 10. We played them 2019. I think we played them in the playoffs. And so I played corner three years. Ramsey, we played, I think, since they started football back in 2013, 20, okay. 2012, 2013. Somewhere around there, we played them back then. And we played them when we were in the region for four years together. Yeah, or at least two years for sure. And um, they they they're they're a powerhouse. They're a lot of fun to watch. I mean, just seeing where that program. I'm right in this. The fact that they started back in somewhere around there, I believe. We're talking um, about Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah, let me look. Let me see. My gosh, there's so many. Let's see. Yeah, 2012. They had a gap from. 1976 till 2012. And I think we're on that 2012, if you see the season games. Let's see. Uh, 2012, they went one and nine. Uh, at Briarwood, Briarwood wins 35 zip. Yeah. So that was, but that was my, you know, that was my, that was 2012. 2011 was my first year as defensive coordinator. So from there, and then just kind of playing them off and on. Um, and then what Coach Nelson did over there. Uh, just was outstanding, um, and I, I think of him as one of the great coaches in the Birmingham area. Um, and then what Coach Jackson is still doing over there has been great stuff. And so it, it it'll be a fun game. Last time we played them out here, they had Tim Keenan and a whole bunch of good dudes, and um, it ended up we blocked a field goal to win the game. We had a three way tie with Pleasant Grove and them, and ended up um, winning the region and hosting Pleasant Grove in the semifinals my first year as head coach. So yeah. I know Ramsey's going to be tough. Um, I, I know Corner plays a tough brand of football. I know Winona has always um, – they, they've been good. Coach Cheatham over there did such a great job for so long. And um, But really learning about Hayden, John Carroll, I really feel like I have to go back and have a history lesson on just because I haven't – you know, been so consumed and we hadn't played them right. recently. And uh, Carver Birmingham, like, I got to play on Legion Field's old turf uh, when they moved Legion Field's old turf to Lawson Field. And I think 1997, Briarwood went over and played Carver Birmingham at Lawson Field. And so I had to wear my Air Jordans out there um, on the game, on the field, <laughs> to do that old school turf. Um, but yeah, so that's my. Um, I mean, we hadn't had much. Like, I'm having to explain. Like, we played Carver Montgomery in the playoffs uh, this past <laughs> year. And so everybody's like, we're well, Carver's in our region. And they're like, Carver? But they're in Montgomery. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's, there's a Carver Birmingham, too. Like, you know, when you head up to Huntsville or Nashville, you pass it on the interstate. It's that. Yeah. One. Yeah. And so that's been a little bit for our boys, like, you know, just because, you know, they, whoever's on our schedule, they'll play and they'll have a good attitude about it. And, It'll rack their world if they don't see it, you know, a new guy yeah. a new team like that with the same name. Yeah. Is there some fun in that for you and, and for the guys? Like, not just, you know, going from one classification to another, but having some new programs, some new names on the schedule. Is there like a – do you find an energy in that or, or what? Yeah. So, I, one of the things I absolutely love about Briarwood being on the south side of Birmingham – Yeah is historically every two years, we're in the North for two years, then we're in the South for two years. And so it happened over the last four years where we were in the North for the first two years. Then the last two years, we've been in the South. And so I've been here for 18 years. And, you know, you've played everybody from Spanish Fort at Spanish Fort all the way up to Florence at Florence. And all of that's in the playoffs. So, you know, I've gotten to play, uh, I've gotten to play down, um, at uh, Pritchard Stadium down there in Viger. I've gotten yeah. to play up at Milton Frank in Huntsville. Uh, we've gotten to go to Russellville. You know, there, there's so many wow. just neat places uh, all over the state that we get to play. And so for me, spending the last two years in, or last four years in 6A, but two years in the South, you're paying attention and you know more about Southern football and what's happening down Mobile, Montgomery. Well, now this coming year, got to flip and got to think, all right, what's happening up north? Like, who are the good teams? And being on the southern part of Birmingham is a blast because truly getting to play the entire state 
um, in, in football and playoff football is a whole lot of fun um, and gives you a good sense of uh, just just where the state's at in terms of right. football. Absolutely. Let's talk about non-region because this is this is this is a fun non-region schedule. Uh, y'all y'all open up August twenty third at Oak Mountain, um, so y'all can walk to that game. Nope. Um, August thirtieth at Homewood. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, host Leeds on September twenty seventh. We're gonna come back to that one for a minute. I have a funny story for you. And November first, hosting Macadory. What do you make of that non-region schedule? Uh, it sounds really good. It sounds really competitive, really tough. And, um, I mean, that's it, part of it. We want to play big-time football. We want to play big-time games. Um, we we want to play local rivals. And so, I mean, you don't get any closer than Oak Mountain. Um, and so, and then you, you co- I think the world of Coach Burgesson, uh, I, I think he's a great coach. We've developed a great relationship over the years. Um, and I think really highly of Homewood. I think back to all the Homewood Briarwood battles that have happened over the years and how competitive that rivalry has been. But also think of the class and the sportsmanship that's happened, whether it's Co- Coach Newton and Coach Yancey um, battling it out back in the day um, and me being just a little peon assistant coach watching it all unfold. And so uh, it, it's really fun to see. Um, and, and I'm grateful that that battle um, is happening and kind of even though we're not in region, we're still getting to play. And then Leeds, you know, Coach Hood, he was here uh, as director of football operations for a minute and uh, really helped me. Like I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for what uh, he, he showed me and kind of how he opened my eyes to some things. And so uh, when he called, I was like, man, I'd, I'd love to play you because I know you do it the right way. And then me and our Via Holmes over at McAdory, we were college teammates together. And so uh, the the fact that I've got um, guys on my schedule, uh, non-region guys that are great coaches, that I know their programs are uh, done the right way, uh, really is just is just a fun thing because um, it, it is about our kids playing, our kids getting experience, our kids getting ready for the playoffs I mean, as part of it. But you also want to do it with people you enjoy being around. And so when I'm on the opposite sideline of these coaches and they're they're good men, um, who do things the right way. That's that's a lot of fun for me. Yeah. I had recorded one of these already with Coach Hood. You know, he was when, – when I moved back to Alabama in 2010, I moved back on, like, Halloween to take a job. And uh, the first game I covered when I came back from Mississippi was Hoover at Clay Chalkville in those 2010 playoffs. <laughs> and I had covered a season of 3A football in Mississippi. So I walked back – walk back in and I'm covering Hoover at Clay Chalkville. And I was like, yeah, this is different. (laughs) This this, this is a lot different. And so I got to know coach hood then. So he was, he was the first one I recorded one of these with. I sent him a bunch of times. He picked the first one and I said, all right, let's go. And uh, he said, you know, we were talking about the schedule and I was like, you know, y'all got, y'all got Briarwood on the schedule. What do you think about that? He said, we need to do one of these, get Kyle on here to, and we need to do one of these like week of the game and do a, like a bunch of week long stuff leading up to the game. And, you know, y'all can do your coach coach stuff back and forth and play your mm-hmm. mind games and uh, <laughs> see see who's going to do what. He he is one of one. I swear. Yeah, I, I no doubt. I mean, it was it was fun when he was here. I'd been assistant coach. I'd been assistant coach for one guy who coached me in high school. Um, I'd been his right hand man. And um, he comes in and he's asking me, well, are you doing it that way? And I was like, well, because that's what Coach Yancey did. And he goes, that's a good reason. But, like, is it your reason? You know, like, what? I know he's done it that way, but what is your reason behind it? So I tried to take the trash out one day. He's like, why are you doing it that way? And, you know, not really. But that he was he would question everything. And yeah. he made me he, he by questioning it, he wanted me to have a reason behind why I did everything as a program uh, or in our program. And I'm incredibly grateful for that because just him asking the question why allowed me to have a reason and a purpose behind things. And so there is, I, I try and make sure nothing's frivolous, nothing's wasted time. It is uh, purposeful and with a plan behind it. And oftentimes, I'm grateful for Coach Hood for doing that. Absolutely. 
that'll be a fun one. I, I I've already said I've said it on like maybe a couple of these. I know I said it on the one with Coach Hood. I can't remember where else I said it, but I said no, it's been two of these. Okay, because I said it with uh, Will Mara at John Carroll too. Is the way this schedule stuff shakes out? You know, we, you know, week to week, Kyle tries to send us somewhere different. You know, so that we kind of touch a lot of different places, and it works out how it works out. But I'm like, I'm trying to put it on record. September 27, I want Briarwood leads. Uh, October 11th, I want Briarwood John Carroll. I was like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I, I want, I want those two games. I don't even know what other games there are that night, but Good. I know and I want. You can get us both on a, a little cast where we're all talking and prepping for the game. You know, Boom. that's it's got to be worth it for Kyle. Like, you know, you're getting that exposure. I know. Can. That's it. That's it. Hashtag content, Kyle. Come on, <laughs> come on. Um, what is? Let, let's talk about this year's team. Uh, what, what, what do you? What did you lose off last year's team? Who you got coming back? You know, who's who are some guys that that seem to be standing out? That kind of thing. Yeah, we lost. Uh, I mean, we lost a lot from last year's team, and but that's typical for Briarwood. If Briarwood's going to be good. You are, you are going to lose a lot of seniors because, as we talked earlier, you got to have that senior jump. And so uh, we're coming back. We got one defensive lineman with experience. Uh, we have a linebacker that's played, but uh, no, we have a starting linebacker coming back. I'm moving a safety down the linebacker, and then we got a DB with experience. And so you don't have a lot on defense, but th that's how it should be um, in a lot of ways. And then offensively, you've got two offensive linemen coming back and a uh, two wide receivers that have played. And so n not a lot um, returning, but like that that's why they're in the system that's why they're learning from 7th grade all the way up each year kind of builds on each other we get a little bit more uh stuff added to it um they they learn a position uh typically starting in ninth grade they learn one side of the ball they learn it really well and um yes they they haven't played varsity downs or a lot of varsity downs but they will have the opportunity where they've played a JV a freshman schedule. They've played a lot of football, just hadn't been Friday night. They've seen a lot of the things. Our, our guys pay attention. They learn. Um, we don't we don't have to reteach while we go over the basics every year. There's the the little wrinkles of each coverage or each defense or each play that you have to know. And our guys do a good job of retaining that. Um, and so we're losing, we're, we lost a lot, but at this point, I've already forgotten about it because I, I feel like we got a whole lot of good guys coming in. Um, Eli Thompson's done a great job at running back this past year. Um, we've got uh, a slew of receivers that have worked incredibly hard this spring, and um, I'm, I'm excited about them. Our offensive line really shaped up this spring. Um, you know, we we run four man front primarily in the spring game. They played a whole lot of three man front. And nor in years past, that rock our world. Uh, but last night, it was almost seamless. Yeah, we made a mistake or two. But for the most part, we just applied our rules on the offensive line. And it didn't matter if it was a four-man front or a three-man front. We were ready to go. And so, and then defensively, it's uh, it, it's moving guys around, finding new homes. Uh, you grow, you get bigger, stronger, faster. And so, positions uh, change, uh, typically – what it's the, the trend seems to be I take a safety moving down the linebacker, I take a will linebacker moving to the middle linebacker spot. Um, and the and the guys know that's coming because they've watched it over their four years. They know the progression that typically happens. And so Will linebacker Asa Harris last year, uh, he's sliding over the middle linebacker spot and he's known that, that he wants to do that for the last um, you know, year. He knows that that's been coming. So he's been watching how the Jack Cornish did it at middle linebacker, and he's preparing for that uh, move. And so it was a really seamless move uh, for him this offseason. And then safety, Ryland Hand coming down is really good. Garrett Witherington's a big defensive lineman. Uh, he's been playing the, the strong side in, moving him inside. And so um, he, he knew that was coming, and then he adapted to it. And when the college coaches came and – I told him what they were doing. And he was like, that's perfect for him. And they told him that. And, uh, you know, and then 
he catches that vision that not only are we doing best what's best for Briarwood, we're doing what's best for you. And typically those two things kind of collide together. Um, and that, that's what's best for the team is what's best for you. And um, it, it's nice when some of these coaches um, recognize that and then are willing to share it. And then you got uh, the guy I talked about, Luke Reynolds, um, started the year at nickel linebacker for us, came the running back, and I don't know where he's going to play. Um, and I don't really play a lot of places. Yeah, see, he can. And so, I mean, last year he took snaps at, from the center at quarterback. He played running back. He played safety. He played Sam, a pass rush team. I mean, he was all over the place. He uh, he had he set the school's all time leading rushing record in one of our games last year, a single game rushing record. And he also had five tackles, a sack, and tackle for loss. So, so yeah, we'll put him wherever. Um, but the great thing is his attitude and his ability to play football um, it, it is a whole lot of fun. So he's got the aptitude for it, and he's got the ability. And so it's like, let's don't just say you're going to be this. Um, and, and he's open to that. So I'm grateful. Yeah. Specifically about Garrett Witherington, um, I remember this has been a few years ago. Uh I can't remember what year, but I was covering – it was the – I remember it was the season opener, and I was at Vestavia. I don't remember who they were playing. Maybe it was just region opener. It might have been Thompson at Vestavia. But y'all weren't playing that night or something. And uh, CV showed up, and he had Garrett with him. And mm -hmm. I can't remember if Garrett was eighth grade at the time or a freshman or what. But CV walked up, and he introduced us, and he said – this is going to be the guy. <laughs> and, you know, and, and Garrett walks up and I think the way CV did it was he said, guess, guess what year this kid is. Cause I didn't, I didn't know his name. I didn't know him. And I was like, I don't know, a senior with you, you know, it, you know, dude's like six, five, like he's massive. You know, he was like, I think he was a freshman. He's like, he he's was. a freshman. And I was like in college, <laughs> like he's like he's he's already gone through the fourth quarter program in Tuscaloosa or somewhere, right? You know, he's like, no, he's a freshman in high school. And I was like, show me the birth certificate and I'll okay. believe you. You know, that kind of deal. But um, just about him, just because he is a guy, you know, locally that's you know, I, I've seen his stuff on Twitter where he's you know starting to get offers from some big time schools and stuff like that. What? Just on the field for him, moving, you mentioned from that outside edge, whatever, to the inside, how will how will he affect the game differently from that inside spot? So, I mean, typically on defense, you got to be strong up the middle. And, yeah. um, you know, like if I had to pick, you're going to take for 4-3, you're going to take three technique, you're going to take the middle linebacker, you're going to take the strong side yeah. safety. Like that's, that's where you're going to start, then you're going to go to the sand back, or then you're going to go to the – a buck end or strong side defensive end you kind of kind of build out but you got to start up the middle and so um for him transitioning inside now all of a sudden like when you're playing that outside edge you have a defensive or an offensive tackle that's just going to hit you or he's not and you're just playing one guy well, all of a sudden when you move inside whether you're playing a three or four i or four you could get double teamed at any point and everything happens so much faster. It's such a quick game. Like, I think maybe the 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 craziest thing in all the sports is what Aaron Donald has done um, with the Rams. I mean, just just to be, yeah, he's undersized, but his quickness that he plays with, his ability to get double teamed or triple team, um, his ability when he gets single block to make plays. Like, everything happens so fast. So your hands have to be incredibly good. You can't just play with your pads. You can't just use your size. You got to use your hand. Your steps become shorter. And so on that edge, because it's tackle, you can take bigger steps. Well, you're inside. Your steps have to be faster. Um, they have to get down quicker. Your hands have to shoot. You have to recognize blocks even faster. So everything about that uh, is a lot I mean, faster, obviously, because I've said that word like 10 times. Uh, but it, but it's a lot more difficult, and it's a lot more reactionary in nature where you have to, like, you can't think. You just have to play. The only way to do that is to get reps at it, 
and to work on your fundamentals. And I think one of the great fundamental teachers in high school football in the state of Alabama is Shane Harmon with our defensive line. Like he does an outstanding job of repping the fundamentals, teaching hands, teaching pass rush moves. I mean, all of that, he does an excellent job with. And so for him, Garrett to just, I mean, just go back to the basics. And it's the basics in a new position, but it's basically the same, but it's not. And so the willingness to do the same things he's already done for two years, to do those same things from a new position with added um, block recognition that has to take place, and then with a more of an emphasis on a shorter step, which is harder because for two years you've been trained to take a, a little bit larger step, and then all of a sudden you have to work your hands, you have to shoot. So it's a huge undertaking that he does. I mean, it, it sounds so simple. You're going from the outside to the inside. Well, it's not quite that simple. And then, and then the block recognition is just a huge piece of it. But now all of a sudden you're not rushing on a tackle. You're rushing on a guard. Um, you're, you're not getting, um, you're not pushing the edge and typically bending in. You're trying to press the pocket. You're trying to work a move. Um, so the pass rush can happen even faster, which is good. You, It's like if you can have a guy that can't get moved on a double team, like that's a major win. If you can have a guy that's good enough to absorb two blocks, so now that you got a middle backer running free, like that's huge. So there's an impact to the game um, that, yeah, it'll be seen because there's sacks, there's tackle for losses, but it's the, the, the plays you don't see that will probably be even more impactful. It's every time a middle linebacker makes a tackle um, for loss. Like, oh, he made tackle for losses. He's got 16, 15 tackle for losses this year. Yeah, it's because there's this guy in the middle that's doing his job at an incredibly high level. And they're so concerned about him, they're not worried about it, um, the middle backer behind him. So that's the that's kind of the, the game within the game that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then there's the challenge for Garrett that, like, you know, just because you've done it this way, you've got to go and master your craft. And if you want to play in college, it's going to be very similar to that. Like, you're going to constantly be asked to do new things. And, you know, so many people see the pro athletes doing all this crazy stuff. Well, when they train, they train the basics. And that's what they focus on. And so um, he gets that. He understands it, which is great. He's willing to do the tedious, boring stuff really well, and that that's pretty important. That's awesome. No, that's that's really interesting stuff. You said you mentioned the word faster like ten times. Uh, na natural segue here. I, I've got to talk to Kyle Southall at some point, uh, but, yes. but but uh, and very soon, honestly. But uh, give give me the give me the high level or. However, you understand it. I've, I've listened to to Coach Matthews' podcast with both of you guys, but um, the what was it? Velocity based training and just the sports and exercise science stuff that y'all have going on at Briarwood. Yeah, it started. I mean, this is all Coach Matthews' vision. Uh, probably he's had it for longer. But when I became head coach six years ago, he had a vision that he wanted to get to. It started with twenty catapult sensors. And us not really knowing what to do with them other than they tell them how fast you're running. And so, I mean, it started there. And then when COVID came, 2020, Kyle came and joined. Kyle's like, oh, I've got like a degree in this stuff. Like, cool, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and so we went from 20 sensors and now we've got 80 sensors that do the GPS stuff. They're only good outdoors, so we can't do them for indoor sports. Uh, but primarily we do football and soccer. Uh, with those and we get out there um, and we track all sorts of data that ultimately lead to player load we know that guys that aren't going to cramp if you don't if you you will not cramp if you have a high player load during the week so it's not actually it's not doing less uh, during the week that prevents you cramping it's actually doing the prescribed amount if you do a typical practice and you're not injured and you have that same practice and you're not lazy and that you shouldn't cramp on Friday because of that. So, I mean, we're, we're limiting our, our goal is to try and limit any time a kid's out um, for injuries. So time loss injuries, how, how can we reduce those? We've kind of gotten it where our kids aren't going to cramp because kind of understand, you know, time over time when a kid cramps you can go back and look and Kyle's made some key things. 
And so started with the GPS trackers. We brought Kyle Tatum in. He's been the defensive line coach at UAB. Uh, he did strength and conditioning before that. And he came and joined us as our strength coach, the tight ends, offensive coach as well. And so he, he started bringing in some speed work. We got timers. We started timing our guys as far as in a 10-yard, just flying 10. How fast can we be? Started really focusing on the speed development last year. And then kind of this year, the new piece is velocity-based training. And so this will be for all our athletes. Uh, we started in the spring with a small sample. We're kind of working towards it. Uh, but basic way I understand it is force is how you move something. So typically, if you're trying to bench press, bench press is just force. Can I get 225, 315, whatever it is, up? Um, velocity is how fast something moves. So miles per hour is typically our most common velocity. Well, we're measuring the bar speed. Uh, so it's it typically in meters per second is what we're measuring. Well, you take force and you take velocity, put them together, and that's power. And so what we're trying to generate is as much power as we possibly can. So we're not we're not going for force. We're slow twitch muscles are taking over and we're just slowly pushing it up. Nobody cares about that. Like, I don't care how fast you can move 315 on a bench press. I don't care that you can move 315 on a bench press. I care how fast you can move that defensive lineman. And then, um, and then you're looking at peak power. How fast can you get to your highest power point? So taking speed and or velocity and force together generates power. How quickly can you get to that? On the offense and defensive line, uh, we went to Alabama, and um, I think Alabama was 0.45 seconds from when the ball snapped to when contact first happens. And one of the strength coaches down there said, if you can get your guys to get to their peak power in 0.45 seconds or sooner, They'll not only look like Tarzan, but they'll play like it. Well, Kyle went back and used our GPS trackers to see from when balls snap to contact. In a high school, for us, it's about 0.62 seconds. So now can we get our peak power, our, our as, as, being as strong as we possibly can, can that happen in the first 0.62 seconds of any movement we do? If we can do that, then all of a sudden, not only are we hitting – but we're striking and we're exploding up and we're generating the most force possible. And we're really learning that. So that's kind of the why behind it. We want to generate peak power as fast as we can. We've got a tool that measures that now and we can train based on that. So uh, we've stopped doing percentages. We want the bar speed to move. Sometimes it's between one and 1 1.2 meters per second. And that's really fast. Sometimes it's between 0.8 and 1, and that's, you know, 60-ish percent. And then sometimes it's 0.6 and 0.8, and that's – it'll be a little bit slower, but it'll be heavier weight. And so being able to judge those things are good. And we're still in the infancy, and we're still learning, but we had the pleasure of going down to Alabama, and they gave us a, hey, you're implementing this on Monday. Here's a goal for you. Uh, and, and we got like a four-month goal, and we got a four-year goal. So we we got a lot of stuff out of that. Um, and I'm not the smart guy. I just have Kyle tell me what I need to know. And, um, but it, it, it's fun to see kind of where it's all heading. Yeah. Did you like, it, when you first started coaching, did you ever think there would be something like this to help get your guys ready? No, it was, uh, it was move heavy stuff. Uh, it felt like <laughs> what the key was. And, um, and, and then like another thing too is, the when we went to Alabama, what's the number one thing you see with incoming freshmen? And they're like body imbalance is kind of the big thing. Yeah. And so typically one side is stronger than the other. These kids have had yeah. bad form. They've squatted and they put all their weight on the right side, uh, stuff like that. And so that's another thing that we can use these to try and correct. We, we do a lot more single arm, single leg stuff that allows you to strengthen both sides of your body. And so we actually start with the, if we're doing a leg exercise, start with your non-dominant leg because you'll get your best reps there, then go to yeah. your dominant leg. And so doing more single leg stuff, single arm stuff it is good to help correct the imbalances. Cause again, 
the weight room is for them to get bigger, stronger, and faster. But we also stand, understand that puberty happens. And so it's not like we're, oh, look, we made this guy bench so much more. Well, yeah, I think puberty had a little bit to do with that too and the maturation process. Yeah. But it's also about time loss injury and it's about preventative stuff. So our weight room, while it's designed for them to get stronger, it's also designed for them to be safer um, and to be more durable on the field. So working a lot of that as prescriptive stuff that can help uh, them to avoid injuries is kind of the goal too. Man, that's, that's fascinating stuff. I got, I got to talk to Kyle soon. Oh, you do. He He's absolutely amazing. He's got, I mean, it, it's a whole lot of fun. Like one of the things that coach Matthews allows us to do um, with all that he's kind of set up is really dive into this. And then what Kyle's finding is, yeah, there's a lot of information about Olympic people. There's a lot of information about college, but this kind of age, that 7th to 12th grade, there's not a lot of information written on that. There's not a lot of studies. And so he's really doing – he, he's writing a ton of articles right now. Um, he's doing a lot of stuff, and it, it's really exciting. Wow. We'll wrap with this. What, what are you looking forward to most about this fall? What I always look forward to the most um, are watching young men grow up watching them mature, watching them take ownership. Uh, I love watching seniors lead um, and, and learning how to lead and helping uh, guide them in that process. I love when a guy learns to take personal responsibility, that it's not somebody else's fault, that I have to do that. Um, so all the things that take place in a young man's life, growing and becoming a man, it is an incredibly fun part. And each year is a different journey with different um you, you never know what's coming like i i don't know what's going to happen this fall that's going to be a bombshell or just shocking um or what's going to be so good that it warms your heart um so that that's the that's the fun part that's why you do it um and then the other thing i love are just the playoffs i mean you know like i can't wait for the playoffs now i have to temper myself because i can't just look there the whole time so <laughs> Like the next thing I'm looking forward to is June 4th when we all come back together and we get to work. So we can get two weeks off from this point and then June 4th. So, man, be so excited when June 4th gets here. And then by the time it's June 10th, man, I can't wait to do a seven on seven at Sam. <laughs> and then seven on seven's hit and it's like, man, I can't wait to do an OTA. And we're going to Mountain Brook for our first one. I can't wait to get there. And we'll do two of those and it'll be like, I can't wait for real football to happen. And then finally we put pads on. I think it'll be August uh, 7th. We'll put pads on. It's like, yes, it's finally here. And then it's like, man, this is so boring. Can we play somebody else? And the, the region game or the opening game comes and we're at Oak Mountain. Student sections are amazing. It's like, oh, this is high school football. And it's like, come on, let's get to our region. Um, and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, this is truly what I've been waiting for. It's the playoffs are here. Let's go see what this team's made of. But I mean, the process that it just goes through and just the, yeah. the ebbs and flows. Like, I know every one of those feelings are coming. I know every little, you know, the ups and the downs. And it's like, yeah. I know it's coming. I know I'm going to feel the same way. I, I just can't help it. But it's just part of the, I mean, the you know, saving coin the phrase, part of the process of becoming a good team. You know, we have to go through all of those ebbs and flows of, uh, the season, um, and, and this season's not just when we kick off or when fall camp starts. I mean, we're in the middle of the season in a lot of ways because of what the summer means. And so like that, there's going to be just these ebbs and flows. And uh, I'm super excited about that whole process. Um, super, like, I t we were talking about just our season and how, you know, we're going to be a 5A program, and we I don't know how many 5A programs – uh, but we're going to play a ninth grade, a JV, and a varsity schedule. You know, we're a 5A program doing that. There's not a lot of 6A programs that are doing that anymore. There's a few. Um, but we're, we're going to try and play three teams. That means every kid in our program is going to get reps this fall. Because uh, when you're a school that's 135 and you, a grade, you've got to have everybody, as many kids that will play, play. And then we need you to get valuable reps uh, because we're we're playing, I guess, the schools that have 300 in a grade are doing that. And some of them aren't. 
Um, but we're going to be one of the few that does that. And so um, th that I, and I was talking to him, I got all sidetracked, but talking to him, like one of the great things is the first JV win of the season. Like when the JV team or the freshman team, but when that JV, this is how I phrased it to them. When that JV team wins the first game, like the locker room is amazing. The the <laughs> field is awesome. They're coming in there cloud nine. And I'm excited and happy for them. But like it, it, that's, that's just one of those small things. That's just fun for a program to have like, Hey, you're playing a game. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. And when you win, doesn't matter the level, doesn't matter the competition, that ought to be celebrated. And so um, I, I look forward to when that happens for our team this year um, because I do enjoy that locker room after those games. And, um, yeah, I mean, just the, the whole part of a season is, is just so much fun. It's something I look forward to. Um, and, and it's like, man, I – I, I don't want this to ever end. I mean, you know, I know there has to be January, February, and March because they're on our calendar. Um, but, man, I loved when spring training finally hit. You know, I, I love that process of just getting to do everything because that's kind of like the, the true start of the season. And when spring break ends, it's like, hey, coaches, let's meet. Let's plan. Let's get everything going. Let's pass out equipment. Like it Just every part of it is a lot of fun. Sounds like you have fallen in love with the process for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no doubt. It's everybody thinks like how you know, like, hey, your team this year when the season starts, it's like, well, it's kind of already happening. And yeah. and being in being in one place, like, you know, I, I got the pleasure of taking over for Coach Ancy, who had been in Briarwood for 29 years. Uh, won three state championships, went to six state championship games, had done an amazing job. Like I'm not having to build from ground zero. I'm taking this dynasty, this mansion that he built, and I'm just going to redecorate it and make it my own. But I want the bones and the structure of Briarwood to stay the same. And so having done that and having to been a coach for 18 years and a player uh, for him for four years, like all that process of what it hasn't really changed for me. You know, I felt that same way about 717 in 2011, 2012, when I was defensive coordinator, I couldn't wait for it. And then I was sick of it. And so that, that whole part has, has always kind of been a part of Briarwood of developing the teams. And so, um, yeah, it's, this is year, I guess I'm starting year 19 at Briarwood. And this is the 19th time I've had this feeling. And it, it's a whole lot of fun of just building the team. That's awesome. That is awesome. Fires me up. Yep. Makes me ready to go to do my little part where I get to stand <laughs> out there with y'all and just keep stats and then talk to y'all after. So, um, well, hey, I mean, I'm grateful uh, for what y'all do. You're getting to highlight our athletes, you know, like it, it's such a neat thing. Highlight the program, highlight the teams that come through here. Um, it's such a special time in these guys' life. It's such a time where it's memories that'll last them a lifetime. And oh yeah, they, they a lot of them print out or get the paper that y'all write and save it and scrapbook it still. I mean, you know, I've got my book from when I was in high school that my grandmother made. Um, and I know these guys have the exact same thing. And so they're not going to remember the, the exact details of what happened on October uh, 17th, uh, 2023, but they will because you, Kyle Parmley, um, were willing to come out here write a story about it and they get their kids, their grandkids get to see their name in a paper. And I mean, that's one of those things, like, I don't know what memories will look like in 30 or 40 years because everything's digital, but the fact that y'all are doing that, that the parents can either print it off or get the paper uh, delivered to them and they can keep that. Like th those are some priceless things because I'm not making DVDs anymore of high, of the games. Like that's what for when I first started, like part of the job was, hey, these parents want DVDs to keep them. Now everything's on huddle. So I, like I don't know what's going to happen in 20 years when these kids are like, can I get my copy of my game? Uh, I, it's digital. I, it's like I don't know where it's stored. It's so that that that's an interesting process um, or thing to think about. But the fact yeah. of what I'll do. D definitely allows them to keep these memories uh, for a long time. 
Yeah, it's, def it's definitely a different time because I'm the same way. You know, you've got scrapbook stuff where your name's mentioned in high school and stuff. And now these days, I'm like, what? Are they just bookmark a tweet? What? What? what a, <laughs> like, what is it they're doing these days to to save and remember? Take a screenshot and print it. I don't know, but yeah, there's there's definitely still a a place for for things in a in a paper of record and something tangible you can put in your hands. You know, I don't have to. I don't, I don't, I don't have to, I have to have a battery in this thing, but I don't have to have a battery in a piece of paper. I can preserve it. Absolutely. Cool. I well, I, I appreciate you coach. And uh, yeah, so at least September 27 and October 11, hopefully more, but certainly those two, I want to be at those games and uh, wish you guys a lot of luck this year back in class 5A. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Thank you, coach. Thank you.